This will be the hay and forage situation and outlook for the upcoming year, which is 2023. My name is Reed Finley, and I have put this presentation together along with Steve Hines. Both of us are extension educators with the University of Idaho. Uh, the things that happened this year that are uh, different from previous years, first of all, we got some of our alfalfa hay exported. There, last year there was a lot of confu uh, a lot of pullback on the on being able to get um, merchandise out through the out through the ports, but we we were able to get a lot of that out this year. The other thing is is that um, there was quite an increased um, need for di quality dairy alfalfa hay, and so the value of that went up quite a bit. Uh, the other things that are happening is there might be a possible early start to um, feeding in those areas where drought has hit us um, this fall a little bit. The other thing is we have a lot of increased costs, the input costs, uh, fertilizer costs, and then also, which is also an input, input cost, is, is inflation costs. So it just costs a lot more to get that alfalfa um, produced and put into the bale. And in order to go through this presentation, we're going to look at three different things. First of all, the supply, then the demand, and then go over just a little bit of a price outlook for us all. So as we go through supply, the two things I wanted to focus on were production and stocks. Beginning with production, I've spent quite a bit of time ga gathering and garnering data um, from the National Agricultural Statistics Service. Um, in order to put together quite a few of these slides. Um, and what I want us to realize is for alfalfa hay production, um, in Idaho our production was up quite a bit, almost 12% from the previous year. That doesn't tell the complete story. I always like to put that in perspective and look at the previous five years. And if you look at the previous five years, uh, we're pretty close to our five-year average. We may be up a little over a percent. So in Idaho, our alfalfa hay production is up. Nationally, it is down just a little bit, and actually significantly down over the five-year average. But in Idaho, this was the we we had a large, almost 4.4 well 4.4 million tons, which has made us the largest alfalfa hay producer in the nation. Um, so those are, are good a good place to start. The other thing to look at is uh, this is some data that. I garnered uh, Idaho alfalfa annual production from 1990 to 2022, and it averages around that 4 million metric tons. But we did come up quite a bit and outstrip that 4 million metric tons this year in 2022. Um, now, some of these, you got to watch these slides really closely because the previous two slides I was talking about alfalfa hay production. Um, right now, I'm talking about all hay production, which is going to include grass hay and other forages that are included in, into our hay production for the year. Uh, um, so we want to make sure that we, we're talking about the all hay production year. And if we look at that, 2022 was the smallest all hay production going clear back to the 1960s. More recently, we're, we're closer to 2012 in our hay production. Um, and so when you're looking at all hay, we did lose some of our production and, and lots of that reflects it into the grass hay and other types of hay that we've got going on. And so for that all hay market, not, not the alfalfa hay market, but specifically for that all hay market, it's going to take more than one year to resupply our stocks. Uh, it is projected by USDA to go up in 2023, and we can see that by that last blue bar at the end there. And I'll be talking about um, May 1st hay stocks later on in the presentation. So for this part, I just wanted to make sure everybody saw that big dip in the blue for 2022, and then that blue bar jumping back up possibly in 2023. And once again, that's for all hay, not just alfalfa. This is another slide that represents all hay, and this is the May 1st hay stock. So this will be the amount of hay that we have left over at the end of the major feeding um, situation. And this is what happened in 2022, and although the Idaho had hay stocks left over, we were up 
29%. The rest of the West was down significantly. And we can see that um, um, all those states around us are in the red. That means, that means the stocks were pretty much drained. And that's one of the reasons why our price did go up um, r shortly thereafter. And so looking at May 1st hay stocks is important. The LMIC is where I'm getting the information from on this. And they won't have the 2023, the, the next bunch of data up until um, in a couple of months they will. But anyhow, Livestock Marketing Information Center is great for giving us information. Now this is the hay stocks in all of the U.S. And they kind of balance out. If you notice that previous chart, we had a lot of red in the west, but a lot of blue in the east. And so 2021 was just a little bit lower, but 2022 ended up being a lot like um, 2021 in our, in our overall hay stocks nationwide. nationwide. Um, so now this one, I'm going to talk about all hay. So remember, we're not talking about just alfalfa again. We're talking about that all hay group. And we're going to talk just a little bit on supply. Um, and on the supply side of things, um, it went down quite a bit from 2021 to 2022. But if you look at the blue um, bar here on this slide, it's projected to go up. And so that will put possibly just a little bit of downward pressure on the price going forward. And yeah, that's a pro projection from the LMIC that I thought was fairly important to put in here. Here's some data that I gathered from the USDA. I took um, from 2015 to 2021 and put um, those um, the January 1st stocks in, from Idaho and, and looked at them compared to the United States. And I want you to look at, number one, the most important pieces of data that I've calculated here is that five-year change. Once again, looking from one year to the other is important, but I also think it's important to look back five years and take a look at what's been happening on average. And as far as Idaho, we're down maybe a percent, um, really close to a percent, but overall in the United States, we're down closer to 4%. And so that was the January 1st stocks that we need to be watching closely. Um, so let's do a little bit of a su summary of the supply. The alfalfa production was up in 2020, in 2022, 12% in Idaho, but a little bit down for the, for the past two years in the United States. As you look at other hay, um, that tells us a little bit different story. Acres are steady in Idaho. Production was down nationally. And I think that's because this other hay category plays into a lot of the pastures and a lot of the grass hay, were, which were fairly hard hit by, by drought situations. It's one of the places where we saved water. We took water away from the alfalfa and headed toward more highly valuable crops like sugar beets and potatoes across the West. And so that did make our, our um, production go down a little bit. The other thing that's really important for the summary <clears throat> is really, really high input costs. And that is escalating and interest rates could dampen um, this. Uh, it could dampen people's, um, uh, especially a lot of the farmers who want, who would have liked to have put in alfalfa hay, but I think because of the high input costs such as fertilizer and high interest rates, they may not be wanting to put in as much hay going forward. And that's even despite higher hay values. So now we're going to move over to demand, and demand is composed of things like disappearance, I'll, I've got a couple, one slide on that. I'm going to be heavy on exports and then also put in a little bit of information on substitute feeds, especially the value of corn and then what's happened in the dairy market because for sure um, the price of milk and dairy really plays into the value of our alfalfa. One slide I wanted to add that's, uh, that's included in here that I haven't included in the past was the targets that we want to have for alfalfa quality. And I think it's important that we really have in the back of our mind those hay quality targets, especially crude protein. In order to get great value and great price on our alfalfa that we're spending a lot of time and energy on and money on because of the increase, increased input prices for fertilizer and everything else, 
we really, really need to be hitting that um, dairy quality market. So we're going to want to have our crude protein to be up above uh, that 22 mark. But also our relative feed value needs to be above that 185 mark. If we're anywhere below those, we may be taking a big hit in our price because as the, um, as the quality goes down, the price can really drop. In order to take advantage of the high prices, we need to be producing dairy quality hay, in my opinion. So now going back to this same chart that I showed you before, this chart, once again, I want to reiterate, reiterate is about all alfalfa hay. Uh, sorry, it's about all hay, not just the alfalfa. And at this point, I want to look at disappearance, which is the red bars. And the disappearance um, has been lowering, which is another reason why the price went up. We just weren't going through all of the supplies that we needed to. However, that disappearance is supposed to increase um, back, to, um, back to 2021 levels um, in 2023. And so we will be eating up more of our hay stocks as we go forward, especially those all hay stocks. Now I'm going to jump into international trade, which uh, may not seem like it is, a, is important because our exports are only around 2 to 3% of the U.S. total. Um, but the U.S. exports, uh, we export about 10% of the alfalfa produced in the, Western, in the Western states. So it's fairly important for us here in Idaho. Um, and the great thing is, is that it does contribute to some of the value of our hay. Maybe only, you know, a few percentage points and maybe only a, only a, a moderate amount of the dollars. But it's the one thing that helps um, put a bottom to the to the price of alfalfa hay, even in, even in Idaho. And exports this year were great. We didn't have the problems with um, shipping containers getting across, getting across the oceans. Uh, some of those problems got straightened out, and we were able to um, beat our exports um, this year. Um, and so exports this fall beat our previous records at over 300 um, mil metric tons. So that was great. And it was the Chinese that really came to bat for us and bought 60%, 68% of all alpha, alfalfa hay in August. And so a lot of our alfalfa hay went over to China. Um, this shows the different um, components of our exports. We've got the other hay. Alfalfa hay is that dark black line that heads straight up after 2011. Our alfalfa cubes stay pretty low, and our alfalfa meal and pellets, which is the blue line, stays, has stayed pretty horizontal. But if you take a look at the alfalfa hay, it has gone up a lot. So there has been an increased demand in our in export markets for that alfalfa hay. Um, here it is for um, alfalfa hay, alfalfa cubes, and alfalfa meal and pellets, which is the red line. It stays pretty low down there. But this is the U.S. hay and hay product export value. And as you can see, once again, those, those values are marching in an upward direction, which bodes well for our stabilizing at least the lower boundaries of our good hay prices that we've been experiencing. Um, other data that I garnered from the, uh, from the um, census, from the, from the trade data from the U.S. census, are these. Take a look at the, on the left, you've got the world total. Um, it has gone up dramatically in the last three years, and that light blue line shows a, dr a, a, a very good dramatic increase in our alfalfa hay exports. And a lot of that can be attributed to China. We can see that, that in, 2000, in 2021, that China really stepped up to the bat and, and um, really took a lot of our alfalfa hay. Other countries that are very important for that market would be Japan, South Korea, South Korea. Um, Saudi Arabia is important. However, it's been buying just a little bit less than it has been in the past. Taiwan's been increasing, but doesn't buy a, a, as much hay as Japan and other places. And then United Arab Emirates plays an important role, but it has been lowering its um, imports in the, in recently. So. Um, we hope to increase the imports from Saudi Arabia and United Arab Emirates if we can. 
and we think we will be able to. This is the um, alfalfa cube exports. So if you're just looking at a smaller slice of that, uh, of what we're um, sending out, let's look at the cube right now. And Japan is the, is the biggest um, um, buyer of those cubes. Unfortunately, Japan in 2020 and 2021 reduced their, their buying of that. But once again, if you take a look at China, China in the past little while has increased their, um, their buying. For as far as the cubes. When you look at meal and pellets, it's really Japan, and those markets have been fairly stable over the past little while. United Arab Emirates has stepped up and bought quite a bit more of the pellets, um, but it really, when it really comes down to it, Japan is the biggest buyer of those. So, when we move away from the exports and start looking at other things that, that influence us, it would have to be corn supply and price. And if you look at 2020, 2022, um, we maybe dropped a little bit in the supply, but our price remains stable. The one thing that we need to be cognizant of is that um, LN, LMIC, the price prediction is down for 2023, and the supply is supposed to increase. Um, and those are two things that are really going to impact us going forward because uh, one thing that we can realize is that oh, out in California um, they can always change what they're putting in to those rations um, into their dairy rations and this is the average pounds of alfalfa hay fed per head per day um, to milk cows in California and if you look at that that was kind of stable from 2005 clear up to 2010, but then has really started taking a drop. And so what's, what this chart represents is the drop in the amount of alfalfa that those dairies are putting in. And what, what they're supplanting it with is corn and other, other um, feeds. And if the price of corn goes down, this could exacerbate this chart and even drive the amount of alfalfa put into those feeds, um, drive it down even further. So here's the annual corn ending stocks. In 2022, we had a dip in those corn ending stocks, which probably helped us out with the price. However, if you look forward to 2023, those ending stocks are projected to be up, e up. And so that might put a downward pressure on, on things like alfalfa, the other things that are competing with the, with the corn. Milk prices also play an important role. I've put a little pink bar across the break-even price that's close to $18 per cubic weight for milk prices. Um, and so that's our break-even price. And if you take a look at it, milk prices have been, have been a lot more volatile in the past. Since 2016, they've hovered around the break-even point and even being a little bit closer to the high end of the break-even point. And recently, in 2021 going into 2022, the price was, uh, was up a little bit. We need to remember, though, that milk production is, has, uh, is up 3% in 2022. And for the 24, 24 state total, um, the people that really are producing the, the milk, it's up 1.5% in 2022. So milk produ production's up. The price is, I think, fairly stable and towards the higher end of the um, break-even price. And so that's, that bodes well for us. This is the Western region range and pasture condition. And I wanted to throw this slide in here because a lot of the um, lower quality hay, the hay that doesn't go to the dairies, is going to be affected by how well the range is doing. And if we look for the, the blue line in 2022, it did dip below that five-year average. And that's because we were in quite a little bit of a drought situation um, during those months. Um, in the fall of the year, we did get some rains and we are receiving some moisture in the form of snow that is um, really, um, it's really making the, the range be a little bit better. So that's going to help us feeding some of those, uh, the cattle that's out there on the range, and it may play into um, 
the values of the other hay and the grass hay type situation. So we did, I guess what I wanted to show this for is that at least in the western region, um, our range and pasture condition has improved somewhat. Um, this is some data that I gathered from USDA. It's the number of beef, beef cows by region. And I wanted you to look specifically at the west, which I outlined with a, with a red bar there. From 2016 to 2022, um, the west is down 1.6 over our, our five-year average. Um, and the U.S. is down 3.1, and that's 3.1% of the number of beef cows that we've had over the five-year average. So, mm, boy, we don't like to see that because that means there's less cows that are, uh, that are needing to be fed, at least if you look back over the past five years. If you look at just Idaho, so the previous chart was for the United States and the West. If you look at just Idaho, our five-year average... Um, is 90%, 98% of the previous year. So we may be, the percent change is, we may be up about 89, about 0.89%, sorry, tripping over my word just a little bit but there, but we might be up about, uh, about a percent. Cattle on feed in Idaho was 98% of previous year, and cattle on feed in Washington was 112% of previous year. So there is some differences in the data there that we need to be watching out for. I think we'll have some slides on the drought, um, but I just wanted to throw this up. The drought is looking better than it was in previous years, especially for Idaho there. Utah has been experiencing quite, quite a drought. If we look at the drought outlook, though, um, for in, in just recently, um, last month, it was projecting to have um, some drought um, across um, the West here, even down and down into California. So the demand summary. These are great prices. I think we've got great prices for high quality dairy hay over the, in the top five dairy producing states. The export demand is growing and previous shipping problems have been partially addressed. And so it looks like I think our exports will be doing us a favor here going forward. Um, corn and other protein price is down and, have, and the corn, stock, corn stocks are up, which may put a little bit of a downward pressure on alfalfa prices. Milk prices are near break even, which bodes well for keeping prices the same going forward. And the last thing is pasture and range condi conditions were dismal, um, but we've recently recharged, uh, we've recently reached average conditions. That mostly um, plays into the fact that I think our average quality alfalfa prices should re remain the same and, and be close to what they've always been. For price outlook, um, if we take a look at what's been happening, um, our prices have been going up, and they were fairly high in 2022. However, if we take a look at the LMIC projections, prices are projected to drop lower than that 250 value coming up in 2023. And I think that has a lot to do with the, with the dairy price, with the number of cattle being down just a little bit, and also with, those, um, with the value of corn dropping a little bit. All of that has to play into the value of our alfalfa going forward. The words on the, on the left up there, the upper left, these are the alfalfa prices that I've been able to garner just recently. In fact, that $230 for the utility and fare uh, was put up just yesterday. And that price at $278 has been about a month old. So I think going forward, we're going to be hard pressed to be above that $250 price point. Um, this is the alfalfa hay monthly average price, and as we see that right now that blue line represents, represents the values for 22 going into 2023, and we're marching along pretty good. Our price is up there pretty high, um, and so right now is the time to probably get out there and work hard to get it sold. It's at a good price right now. This is some 
information that I got from the Hoyt Report, and I'd like to thank the Hoyt Report for um, offering to give us information. If you want to watch uh, hay prices, especially international hay prices, it probably would be good for you to go ahead and, and, um, and, and go ahead and get the Hoyt Report. You can just Google it on the internet. But if you take a look at this, the green is the 2022 data going from September, October, November, we can see that is lowering. And I think that does, um, it's something to watch out for. And that's dollars per ton. And that's the prices that we've received June through December. So that's important to realize that those prices have been coming down just a little bit. Um, cost of production is something we really need to watch out for. Um, the variable costs, the seed, the fertilizer, the fuel, that's all going up and won't be, won't be cheap this coming season. Our fixed costs also are probably going up and that's insurance taxes and our long-term long fixed leases and things like that. It's going to be harder and harder to match these prices. These are the input prices that the University of Idaho have had for quite a few years. This is the cost of different inputs and this is these are all going up. It's going to be harder and harder to hit these input price targets. You can get these target prices at IdahoAgBiz.com. It's important to always look back at those. Remember, these price levels, bronze I always put is in is you're going to be covering your operating costs. Okay, silver, you're only, you're only going, to be able, you're going to be able to cover your operating costs and your fixed costs. And then also, what we're shooting for is, is our gold standard, um, and that's covering operating costs and fixed costs, and then also trying to get in a little bit more out of debt and taking care of some of our savings and investments in case some of our children want to go to college, right? Go to the University of Idaho. So for, for producers and end users, I think we really, the takeaway is know your cost of production. Try to have the lowest cost of production of anybody. Know your break-even prices. That's not the same for every operation. Know what you need to do to break even, and that's the day you should sell, okay? Keep seasonal price moving in, in mind. Sell it when the price is high. And know who has the market leverage, meaning know, knowing what the price of milk is and what those dairies need to get out of, the, of, their, of their milk. So price summary, the higher prices in the western states, California, Texas, and Idaho, has pushed the price up. In California, it hit a, uh, hit a huge price. And this is especially for, true for premium and supreme quality. Make sure you're trying to get your protein uh, above that 20%. And then for California, Idaho, those, those states that really produce the milk, price was up more than $105 a ton more, $105 more than what it had been. And that's why we got those $390 values. So wrapping up here, it's an especially tough year to predict because alfalfa price is already elevated. The milk price is high, but really, really close to those break-even point, point prices. I think it's going to stay right up there in the high part of their break-even prices for milk price. Um, but the input price is increasing. High interest costs are the ones that are really going to be hard to deal with going forward. Global, globally, the overall economic situation is expected to remain uncertain. Um, that has a lot to do with politics. Um, the inflationary environment is likely to continue in 2023, but possibly clear into 2024. We've got um, politics, we've got wars that are going on, and that also that all plays into those higher prices. The all hay production is estimated to be higher. How, look at May 1st hay stocks. They were down in the West, but higher in Idaho. And domestic demand is strong due to that strong dairy demand. One of the great things that, that I noticed when I went through all the data is the export demand is strong in China, which should put a lower value, put a basement or a floor on those alfalfa, especially alf good alfalfa prices. Substitute feed prices are lowering and may affect the price of other protein sources in alfalfa. Remember, corn prices have gone down a little bit. So I hope you've all had a great time. Um, I've had a great time putting this information together. If you have any questions about it, you can always look me up. It's, um, and I'm easy to find. Thank you.